Ikea bags in the ceiling. Dude, that's fucking dope, man. So excited to be joined on this couch by Sean Brady because he's Philly tough, right? Brian and Luke didn't tell me much about this interview. I'm a big fan of the show, so these two are always going off the rails. Sean, I have to sit this close to you, not necessarily That's... because I want <laughs> I have a heat-seeking booty, but because of the angle of the camera. This is a nice little setup you guys got. This is this uh, couch matches your drug They put a rolled up $100 bill as one of the props, and we were like, yeah, it's a little too, a little, a little too sketchy. Just waiting on you, Luke. Jesus, you look ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, against that couch, I could not imagine a worse look for you. Oh, Jesus, could this fucking be? <laughs> I look like a polar bear riding a tricycle in this fucking thing. Come on, you got leg on there. Jesus, nice and cozy. Dude. Oh, that's so good. I mean, me, man. Man. that is a very small <laughs> Some of the very best rappers that I love, the best underground rappers, come from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. And one of our favorite welterweights also comes from Philadelphia. <laughs> it's my friend and yours joining us here for Room Service Diaries. It's Sean Brady. Hi, Sean Brady. What's up, Luke? Br uh, Sean Brady, how many times have people said to you, not from Philly, hey, how come you talk just like Eddie Alvarez? Um, a lot, <laughs> a lot. I, uh, that Philly accent is yeah, unique. It's, it's, uh, it's serious, but it's, I guess we're proud of it. Uh, uh, no, proud. So you know how like in, uh, if you're from Boston, they'll joke is Pak the Kai and Hava Yeah. Do yeah. you guys have like a Philly tongue twister around the accent? Uh, the way we say water, everyone makes fun of us. Yeah. I say water. And, water? And I guess it's supposed to be water. You know it's water, water, right? Yeah. yeah no, we, yeah, Name the water. We say, yeah. like, I got my water in this little plastic, in this little paper bag here. I guess it's supposed to be water, but yeah, that's a, that's one. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. We All right. So are you born and raised Philly? Yep. West Philadelphia born, born, born and raised. Okay. Northeast on, Philadelphia. On the playgrounds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm from like halfway in the middle. I'm from... Blue collar Philadelphia, Philadelphia. How many batteries have you thrown at various baseball players at the stadium? <laughs> Personally, not me. Some people I probably know, many. How many lampposts did you tear down when the Eagles won the Super Bowl? I've watched them grease them and I've watched people climb them. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have you chanted Big Dick Nick because of what he was able to do? Four of the Philadelphia Eagles. We've chanted Big Dick Nick <laughs> many, many times. He's got that times. BDE. That's Nick Foles. Nick Foles. Incredible. Uh, yeah. Well, listen. Let's 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 sort of recap here. So you are not in the middle of a fight camp. Nope. But you did have the last win over Michael Chiesa. Yep. How have things been since then? Because um, I know your I know your septum was all fucked up after yeah, that fight. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I broke my nose so many times. I can't for, tell. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> people are like, you got your nose fixed, but it still looks like shit. I'm like, well, the inside works, so that's right, what right, matters. Right. But uh, I got my septum fixed. Um, I'm breathing. I'm back. I've been back to training, and we're hoping to get a fight. But, yeah, I beat Kiesa. Um, I was still in the limbo of getting a fight, and uh, we weren't hearing anything. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get my nose fixed. I haven't been able to breathe for a long time, and uh, so that's where we're at now. That's you're 15 and 0. Yeah. So you're in that, like, Oh shit! I'm coming on stretch of your career. I mean, they yeah, yeah. I'm trying. I don't get. Uh, I don't get that much love. I don't think. But um, why not? What do you think? I don't. I don't know if it's like uh, how the U.S. is. Like, I feel like if you're from another country, no matter who you are, like they support the shit out of their guys. Like, if you look at Rachmanov, like he doesn't say anything online. But he has 300,000 Instagram followers. Yeah. Like, his people support him no matter what. I just feel like we have so many different sports and so many different athletes. Like, I don't know if it's just hard to support everybody, but um, that's kind of how it is. If ever actually acknowledged his Indian birthright, he would have that same following, just, just to point that yeah, out fairly. Yeah. But um, when it comes to— You're to, the world's dumbest <laughs> man. When it comes to where you're at at this point, like— you're hungry. Yeah. You want to prove yourself yeah. bad, but you you got to wait your turn. Yeah. Um. How do you like navigate that period? Is it just about every day I got to do this? Every day I got to prove to them. Yeah. I um. I love training more than anything in my life. You know. Um. I really pride myself on just trying to get better every single day. So I don't have a fight, but I'm trying to get the best I can. I stay in shape. 365 days a year. This is, it's my life, you know? And eat even clean, bro. Yeah, eat clean, bro. That's, uh, they're actually uh, a company I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but nah, seriously, I just, I just pride myself on getting better every single day. And that's what I'm trying to do until I have a fight. And once I have a fight, 
I'm trying to test myself against the best guys in the world. Uh, did you grow up with that eye of the tiger when it came to to playing yeah, sports? In yeah, high like, school? Who were you and, in high school? Who were you in high school? Um, I start. It's funny. My high school didn't have. I went to like a trade school, so they. I went to a school for auto mechanics. They, we didn't have a wrestling wait, so wait, wait, wait. school. Did you go to a school for auto mechanics because earlier in your life you got caught stealing cars? No, I've never okay. stolen a car. <laughs> what, what kind of dick question is that? <laughs> Large where man in a tiny chair. I mean, I mean could, this, could this chair be worse? Could the chair be worse? I don't know. Uh, I've never stolen a car in my life, just to, just to be clear. Successfully. Yes, 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 right. yes. Um, but no, and I, I started training martial arts pretty young. I started in um, ninth grade. I started training Muay Thai. Then I found Jiu-Jitsu. How'd you, wait, ninth grade? what 14 or 15 yeah. what occurred to you to go to a muay thai gym of all well a buddy we all like most kids in high school they start lifting weights we were lifting at a local rec and a buddy of mine was doing jiu-jitsu already and doing muay thai and he was younger than me and his older brother trained too and after after school they'd be walking to class in their geese and we'd be fucking making fun of them. Yeah, like, that's about the lamest fucking yeah, thing. I one yeah. time saw a guy in a gi at a bus stop, yeah, and I, wanted, yeah, I was like, I hope the yeah, bus hits you. Yeah, we didn't yeah. have guys with geese in my town, but we had the ROTC people, the people in the damn uh, oh, the uniforms. ROTC yeah, uniforms. Yeah, we just make fun of them. Yeah. All right, sorry to cut you off. Well, no, no, he, people like he, you. he would walk, it, they would walk to, uh, it was called Semper Fi MMA, and um, they were training, and then they were like, listen, like, you guys should come do it. So me, a couple of my buddies, and my younger brother all went. We did the two-week free trial, and I signed up. They all kind of fizzled out, and I stuck with it. And then mm -hmm. I trained throughout all high school. I had my first fight when I was 19. I was 5-0 and as an amateur, and I turned pro when I was 21. So how'd you get good at wrestling? Just through MMA? I Yeah, just through MMA. You People, never wrestled on a wrestling team or anything? Nope, never. People so, ask right. me all the time. They're like, where'd you wrestle at? And I, it was just through MMA. So you're coming up in this blue-collar town, almost like a factory town vibe, it mm -hmm. sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yes, except that, he's a man. That same intention, all right? Uh, you probably hung out on couches like this in basements, all right? Or or were you... I had a couch like this in my basement. Okay, but were you that kid that took chances and got in trouble and explored and experimented life, or were you focused that you were on your way to something while you were starting to have this success? With like, you, like for, just to add on to that, you said you stuck around tra like training when your friends fizzled out. Like, why did you stick around? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I so I was like when I got super serious about fighting was. I, when I was 4-0 as an amateur, I was still going out on the weekends, drinking beers, like yeah. literally up until the weekend wearing before the my fight. Rugs. Wearing drug Chasing rugs. Them up around, <laughs> Not you know? doing yeah. drugs. Stealing Camaros. Wasn't I'm doing drugs. Them. I was drinking beers, though. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Weeks, like uh, literally the week before my fight. And um, I just didn't know anybody. I was 19 years old and I was fighting and I was winning fights. And then uh, I met Kristen and it was my last amateur fight. And, this uh, is your wife. This is my yeah, wife now, yes. No, 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 we're married. No, we're married. Sorry, it's yeah. official. We're married. We're Breaking married. Breaking news. They're Breaking married. Breaking news. We All are right. married. And then um, I was training with Jonathan Webb, who was in the UFC. Paul Felder was in the UFC. Sure. But they're, at the time, they're all fighting for Cage Fury. And they're like, listen, like, if you're serious about this, you can go somewhere with a career. And uh, so that was my first fight. I did a 12-week training camp. No drinking, no eating like an asshole. I won first round submission. And then that's kind of where it all started for me. Yeah. What was the first time you met Paul Felder? Paul was coming from, so there was this gym, and uh, all all these guys were coming out of there, and their coach was kind of an asshole, like super, wouldn't let them go cross train with other people, like really, uh, like um, well, really controlling, like Jersey guy, right? He, the, the, the determined jujitsu was Crayonch. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very, um, very overbearing of these guys. So Paul was still fighting for CFFC, and he was looking to transition into a different team. And it was me, Daniel Gracie. Where Daniel just moved to Philly. Our gym was just getting set up. Paul came over, and then it was kind of history. Paul came, Jonathan Webb came, and then we had we kind of started this. Do, well, I guess what I'm saying is, do you remember the first time you trained with him? Yeah. So the first he just broke his nose, just got his septum fixed, and uh, John Jonathan Webb came up to me. He was like, "Bro, like this dude's a fucking hothead." Just keep your hand, <laughs> keep your hands up when you when you spar him. So literally every time anyone was sparring Paul, he would start throwing bombs on you, and we were just his takedown defense sucked. So we were just taking him down and just <laughs> ground and pounding him and just submitting him. But over the years, it got better and better. So those yeah. takedowns became harder to get. But yeah, long time for me, it was hook, shoot, take Paul down and beat him up on the ground because 
he was throwing wheel kicks at you, knees, elbows, and he'll tell you too. So, but um, yeah, he was a he was a a hard dude to deal with on the feet, but it made us all fucking super good. Yeah. So, so boxing's got that Philadelphia fighter stigma that means yeah. not toughness. a stigma, like it's a badge of honor. Okay, yeah. but it means toughness, but it also has like that other side of it where sometimes too tough for your own good, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. a Meldrick Taylor. Um, is there something like that on the MMA side as well? I mean, or is it just no? I know what I'm what I'm made of coming from Philly. I mean, kind of because if you look at Two of the bigger names that came out of Philly, Paul and Eddie Alvarez, they're they oh, built yeah. their they built their careers on, Hard on toughness, you know. And about uh, that life. Me, yeah, definitely about that life. And me and Eddie actually connected during the pandemic because he was fighting for one, and um, I had UFC fights coming up because we were still fighting. So we trained a lot together. And uh, where was he we, training when you first came up? Because he was a big so, deal already. Eddie was training at the gym called the Fight Factory. That's right, Fight, Fight Factory. Factory. Yes, he good was training call. at Fight Factory, and. Um, then he eventually he moved down to what was then it wasn't Sanford it was um, Hard Knocks or Hard Knocks Black or Zillion. it was Black Zillions. Yeah. Yes. So he was at the Black Zillions and then he moved back and was training with Frank Yeager and Ricardo Almeida. That's right. Edson Barbosa was I there. Used to call them the East Coast Super Friends. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. So they had that whole thing going on and then um, but now he's so we we were all just training and but yeah back to the Phillies definitely got some fucking. Super grit to them. Definitely uh, definitely got some tough. Yeah, but for there. boxing, here's the thing about it. It's like I understand Philly boxing and its community, even though I'm an MMA fan, yeah. more than I have a clear sense of Philly MMA. Just look at the Dalkus brothers, Philly MMA. Right? No, no, no. It's not that Philly MMA is not there. They're there and then some. It's just that what is the what is the Philly MMA community relative to the Philly box? Is it? And I'm being, I'm being serious. Is it just along racial lines? Um, I really, it's it's weird, like, we all have our own gym, like the Dawkins brothers. I actually started training with them. We were all from that same gym, Semper Fi MMA. Like mm. they were there when I went there. Their coaches went one way, my coach stayed there. So they they went to a different gym and I stayed at Semper Fi. And now it's kind of it's me, Jeremiah Wells, who's in, in the UFC, Pat Sabatini, Paul Felder, Pat's, a, fucking Pat's hammer. a hammer. He's probably one of the best guys I've ever trained with, regardless of size. Wow. Like, he is the hardest round in the room. And um, he's another guy. He gets no respect that he deserves. He's 4 0 in the UFC, and nobody's talking about him. But um, yeah, Philly's, it's taken a while to get where it's at. Like, it, we're almost at a good spot where I feel like people are starting to recognize what's going on in Philly, especially with our team. But like you said, before that, it was just Eddie and kind of no one knew about Philly MMA, you know? But, um, but it's it always thought about as boxing. Yeah, get about the lack of respect. Do you think it's, like, I mean, here's the thing about you and Pat. You guys also don't talk shit on social. Well, that's You're big, not out there yeah. fucking banging pots and pans, yeah. you know? Yeah. Pat's like, not big on social at all either. And honestly, to, to, to Eddie's credit, Eddie, I mean, people would pick fights with Eddie on social. Yeah. But I don't really recall Eddie trolling anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. really, not much. Yeah, Eddie's the same way. He's kind of just built his thing off of, him Underground just, King. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he he's not on social media. He's not huge on social media. Neither is Paul. It's just, I don't know. I just feel like some people just have that thing. It's just some like, people have that reputation. Connor's great at talking shit because that's in him. Yeah. Like, and then you try to see all these guys implement it and they look like fucking idiots. And it sounds bad. Like, I don't want to be that guy. Pat doesn't want to be that guy. So we just we win fights and then that's how we're gonna build who we are. When you talk about not yet getting that respect, maybe. It's, you know, the bigotry of fans that are intimidated by your aggressive ink. No, you know what I mean? No, no, no. Yo, I know. See, no, no, your no, no, you're full no. of shit because here's why I know you're full of shit. I don't have nearly the amount of tattoos you do, but even this big one I have here, <laughs> when I take my daughter to like gymnastics practice, all the other kids look at me like yeah. a fucking Godzilla yeah. walked in the door. <laughs> so I know people yeah. are. Oh, obviously, yeah. I'm joking with you, but. You do have a very distinctive ink game already. Yeah. No, you know you what? He, I, I, in a sport that has a lot of shitty tattoos, but there are some alphas out there. No, he's got some good I love ones. Josh Emmett's game. I like Michael can, Chiesa's game. Is he in the running, Luke? Yeah. For best ink in this yes, game. He right? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Can oh, I yeah. see the inside right bicep? So that is. I mean, like, show, show, the, show the camera, cheeks, please, John. Dude, that is the dude. Look at the, that is extraordinary. Yeah, quality. I'm actually getting. I'm getting this. I'm getting a lot of this stuff lasered. I'm getting it all redone. Yeah. Because. A razor when, covered, and then I'm getting lasered, yeah. light like lightened up, and then blasted Damn. over. Because I'm like most people, they get tattoos when they're young, and they don't know what they fucking like. Right now, I'm all about Japanese, so like Do we are this is all new school, like all new Japanese. My whole body is yeah. pretty much Japanese, so I I'm trying to full man. Japanese bodysuit. Luke yeah. likes the technique. I love the color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, oh, but no, no, the Japanese is tremendous. Yeah. Uh, that's what the, my left my left arm is going to be a yeah, full on Japanese yeah. sleeve. When you got the hands covered. 
That's a real commitment covering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, and I mean the back of your head's a real commitment too. Which one was worse? Uh the back of my head was pretty bad. The hands actually aren't that bad. I have both my feet done, they're not bad. No, I got the inside of the wrist here was they, real they spicy. All, they all hurt. Um the ass. The ass cheek hurt. <laughs> no, the you're, ass cheek you're, hurt. you're not yep. one of those guys. That, I have my that, ass cheek tattoo. Dude, I like to point out Brian Campbell's like, I don't get ass cheek tattoos. Ooh. Andy Ruiz uh, and Sean Brady have ass Ooh. cheek tattoos. I'm going, I'm the right cheek's gonna be next. If you Ooh, asked, body. if you said, hey, BC, you know Luke a long time, what does he look for in a man? Dude, ass tattoos. Ass tats. He is texting me <laughs> pictures of ass tats all the time, going, BC, this is the technique that I'm looking so for. In ja like with Japanese tattoos, a lot of guys they go from their back, they go down, and they go and they cover the back of their butt. And that's like a big, a big a, that's a big thing. Okay, but that's gotta be an uncomfortable acquisition. Oh, yeah, right? it's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's I mean, not that fun. guy, that guy's down there thinking, I'm either gonna change his oil or or tattoo his ass like I got one or the other right you know we, yeah it's uh, <laughs> I don't like that look at all it's okay? not yeah. it's not a comfortable spot to get tattooed why do you want to be so tattooed like people ask me that I have my own answer what's yours yeah what are you hiding from uh <laughs> I just love I just love it I just love Japanese art um they're fucking they look cool and I just enjoy the process you know? I, I've never or what about you I've never been into piercings yeah no never no. into crazy hairstyles mm -hmm. But I have always thought tattoos yeah. were yeah, and it's, the, the, that was the way I people decorate with. You don't wear a lot of jewelry either. Nope, I don't wear jewelry. Nope. I, I mean, I got my wedding yeah. ring, but that's it. Nope. But I did want to decorate myself with tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and the age I'm at now and the style I like, good Japanese solid tattoos is where I'm at. I know what I like. Uh, okay, what's dragons big. Brother, because I say too, what's what too far too? because Austin Vanderford has an aggressive throat tat. So what's too far for you personally? There's nothing too far for me. Yeah, for no, no, my no, no, mother, no, no. inside the lips and shit. Oh yeah, that's too far for me. For my mom, it's the front of my neck. She's begging me not to do the front of my neck, and uh, I want to scream things at people yeah, yeah, yeah. from a different generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? for sure. Uh, I want to do the sides of my head to where oh. like my haircut's done like you can see it brutal uh sides of my neck i'll do i'm going to try to hold off in the front of my neck luke's been trying to get me to get like a teardrop or something yeah, next yeah, to my yeah. eye i'm like what is that That'd be a good look he's like you. no go to harvard it'll be good Just walk we've, we've talked we've talked about neck tattoos i'm with you the front of the throat the blasting of the inside of the throat yeah. that is a lot but i think the side of the neck is like, actually not so bad yeah just like a um like what you're talking about doing with your arm, just like a singular piece, like yeah. all, all on the, like I would do like a big cat, like some kind of like cat right. on the side of my neck, or I want to get a uh, traditional style eagle on the side of my neck. That's what I was. Do you think enduring that pain for. does like build a deeper resolve in you? Well, like me and my man Luke were talking about, I, I try to get <laughs> down. I'm not part of that, tough I get part down. Well, right? listen, there's there's it's 2022. There's numbing cream. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't doesn't do. It doesn't take all the pain away, but it takes away a good amount of pain. If, if, if they could lessen up childbirth, which they have, thanks to drugs, mm -hmm. where are we at with tattoos? Because that's, that's what, what I saying. tell my doctor every year at the, at the checkup when he's like, you know, we could... <laughs> we, could, we could do that this year you know we could figure out where you're at there and i'm just like dude look how many times he derails a conversation mm -hmm. no no i know but i mean that dick balls or uh, but i mean that it's unbelievable and sometimes i'm like maybe i just need to toughen up maybe i can start getting tattoos if i just toughen up yeah, yeah, yeah. they think they're like oh what if we did a bit where we look you go to vegas and you go get like a flash tattoo off the wall yeah, yeah, yeah. like wouldn't that be like amazing i'm like uh, yeah sure let's go like yeah. it's not some Motherfucker, that's like going to get drive through for me. Yeah, like, it's not a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so you've that's gone out guy. to get like run errands and come back with a tattoo. You're no. like, where you been? You're like, oh, there's been there's was, been times you know, where I wanted to. Is the point? But yeah. if you guys are gonna pay for it, yeah, we can go fucking do that. Uh, she, my wife Kristen, she doesn't she doesn't even know what's going on at this <laughs> point in my tat. I started, I got the Hanyo on my back, and that was it was over from there. She has, she's like, what does she say about him? She just. She doesn't like my. She doesn't like the Hanya personally. She's. Can we not, get her she, hot mic here. She, I mean, come she, on. She's not a fan. But now she like loves everything else. But I come home with. I have so much shit done. She doesn't even know what's new, what's old. So, yeah, it's it's all just getting covered up. How, yeah. how does she deal with uh, your career? I think she deals with it a lot better than most people would. Um, I think she. Uh, Sometimes might need to be. She could be fighting instead of me. Like mm. when when she was uh, at the apex, that was the first time she's seen me fight since the pandemic, and she was motherfucking this, motherfucking that. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure Sean Shelby looked back and said, "Damn, she's got a mouth on her." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and Kiesa's true fat, matchmaker. I'm pretty thinking. sure <laughs> Kiesa's wife was like right there, and uh, yeah. yeah so. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I. I think this is right. Isn't Eddie Alvarez's wife also like ultra yep. aggressive? Yep. She you you can hear her screaming, Eddie! Like th like on the broadcast. Yeah, but it's more her. like Eddie! 
yeah, 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 his what wasn't his wife like super loud? She was super hot, Rachel. I don't know about the No, like, he there was a boxer that had a wife like that too. Okay. Yeah, Eddie's wife is is the same way. But no, she, she like I said, she's been with me since I was nobody, had nothing, amateur. So um yeah, she's been along this ride with me and she deals with it. Very what, well. what about the injuries though, coming home with those? Um I honestly haven't had that many like bad injuries. I get some Stitches here and there. My my nose. I broke my nose when I was. Yeah, dying. but you had the you had the staph infection. So the sta that was literally that was completely different because th that was the first time I've ever even had fucking staph in my life, and it just turns out to be almost the worst case, and I almost lost my leg because of it. But uh, damn, that was yeah. whoa. Yes, thank you for not watching our first interview. Here's the uh, that's a scar if you can see it. It's is that where they ran the pick line? So the pick line was in my um in your ribs. The pick line was in my in my uh, bicep. Damn. And so. That was like the worst experience of my life. What people, a lot of people don't know is like I told you that Kiesa fight, I was offered that uh, when I was still not even cleared to train. My ankle wasn't even, my incision was still open because when they stitched me up, my, my cut was so big, they couldn't fully stitch it. So when they took the stitches out, I still had a big gash in my, in my foot and I still had a pick line in my arm. So I couldn't, you're not allowed to sweat or do anything like that. So she would come home and I'd be riding my echo bike in the fucking garage, in, in the garage <laughs> and I'd have fans on me. So I wasn't sweating. And as soon as I would start sweating, I would stop let my heart rate like calm down and I'd start ripping it again. But, um, is it, yeah, it was different breed, different breed right yeah, here. Being BC sweat walking up and down. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, no, I not saw your eyes. Work. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but you were like, uh, yeah, oh, was okay, like, okay. You're yeah. on the, the echo bike is designed yeah, to hurt you. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I was dripping it right before I came here, uh, this morning, but, Okay, then, then, dude. Uh, to be fair, like, w what is your drive at the moment? Is it about proving people wrong? Is it about making the money? Like, what is the thing that is like pushing you to I do just, this? Well, I want to be the be the best me. Like, if you if you guys follow Paul, like, uh, like obviously I do. When I'm done fighting, I'm fucking competing jujitsu. I'm fucking running marathons. I'm doing Ironmans. Yeah. Like, I just I love putting myself in pain. Like, I just enjoy it. I love training, and I just want to become the best version of myself. And there's no other sport to do it like martial arts because you can literally not, you can't be the best at anything. There's always new shit to learn. There's always something you can get better at. There's always, you can get stronger. You can get more conditioned. There's always something you can get better at. And that's what I'm trying Luke, to do. Luke, he likes his pleasure spike with pain. Well, actually, it's you know what I'm saying? It's an interesting way to think about it. Have you ever thought, thought back? Like the tattoos will probably fit into that, right? Even with yeah. the dummy cream, they still fucking yeah, hurt. Yeah, oh, yeah. Have you ever thought about like why it is that you like embracing like quite literal pain? I don't know. I just enjoy it. I enjoy it. I love, like, even I don't have a fight coming up, and I'm I'm sparring twice a week. As you can see, I got a black eye. Yes. I fucking it's a receipt. Training hard, and uh, I just love just hard fucking training. It's there's nothing better. It's interesting though, like because this is to me maybe maybe we always talk about like oh fighter versus athlete, mm -hmm. and you know good athletes can make good fighters. Yeah. You are clearly yeah. a good athlete, yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. But dude, if you don't have that embrace that you yeah. have, yeah. The, I don't give I don't give a shit if you're well Romero athletically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've seen guys come in. Um, who are good athletes, and like you said, good athlete doesn't mean you're going to be a good fighter. And you have to have that fighter in you. If you're an athlete, it's going to help, but there there aren't many guys who come in, like, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm a really good athlete, and if you don't have at least a little bit of that fighter in you, you're not going to last. Because once you once you have hard rounds, once you get tired, you're you're just going to quit, and you're not going to want to be Are you at anymore. the point in your career where you're still – in some of your victories in your mind, just outworking people? Obviously, at this level, you have to outthink people as well, and then sometimes you just have to be, you know, ability to just make things happen in yeah, the moment, yeah. whatever. But, like, do you still feel like you're just out-desiring people in the cage? Yeah, um, I think that I haven't even shown a fucking... I know a lot of guys say this. I, I feel like I haven't even shown a tenth of what my coaches and my training partners know that I'm capable of. My, I'm just, my mind is still catching up to... My physical, if that makes sense. Yeah, because to be clear, you handled uh, Kiesa with an ease that even if people had picked you coming in, yeah. I'm not sure they expected. Yeah, well, honestly, I thought that fight was going to be a lot easier than it was, but I broke my nose and I couldn't breathe. So um, I lost one, maybe two minutes of a 15-minute fight, and I'm fucking sick with myself about how that went. You know, I wish I could do it all over again and, and finish Kiesa, which I think I would. But um, but your mindset is about just essentially mastering yourself, yeah, getting, getting yeah. the very... Yep. And if it if that leads to a UFC yeah. title... Well, I know the best, it, but... the best me can finish anybody in the top 
15, in the top 10, in the top five. And I know I can be a UFC champion. I just got to get the opportunities to do it. Let's talk about some of these guys. What did you make of Hamzat versus Gilbert Burns? Man, it was... Uh, I, I seen a lot of people giving Hamzat shit because he had a tough fight. Like, I feel like people thought... Hamza was going to go in there and fucking shoot lasers out of his eyes. Like, he's not, he's not, he's a human. Like, he's, yeah, he's very, very good. And he mauled a couple of guys who weren't that good in skill. But Gilbert, like, I knew that was not going to have, like, go down like that. I knew it was going to be a tough fight. And I knew Gilbert was going to take it to him. And he fucking did. And Hamza looked great to go in there being number 11 to beat the number two guy. Like, that's a big fucking jump, and he looked great. And how many people do you think could have done exactly what Gilbert did in that fight? Be that freaking savage and keep pushing that and take on that damage. In our in our division, not not that many. Um, Hamzat's beating most of the guys in the division, hundred percent. Mm. But uh, not me. You know, um, I think I can beat all these guys, and uh, I think we're gonna go like this until we meet each other, and it's definitely gonna happen. So part of you saying, you know, you haven't had a chance yet to show how great you can be. Is that particularly angle that spar at, at your striking, at your at your um, or or do you think you've shown it well as well balanced as you could attack? Um, I just feel like uh, it's when you go in there and you fight. It's there's not it, it's the weirdest experience of your life. It's so hard to explain because it doesn't. It's not like I train and I pretty much fight every single day, and it, there's nothing that can compare to an actual fight when you're in the octagon. I'm just saying as once my like my once I can do what I do in training inside the octagon, I don't think anybody can beat me in the world. Let's talk about some other ones. Uh, Hamzat, like so we talked about how good he was. Tell me, give me your scouting report on him now. He uh man, he's obviously people talk about how big he is. I don't think he's that big. He's just tall. Like is a big, a big guy. Um Neil Magny's a big guy, but they're tall. They're not, like, he's not fucking 210 pounds. And, you, he, and for he, folks who don't know, you've trained with Neil Magny. Yeah, I've trained with Neil Magny. Um, he's a big guy. He has good striking. Obviously, he has good wrestling. He has good um, good submissions. He's very well-rounded everywhere, you know? He um, doesn't have many holes, but he showed in that fight, which I already knew, he's a human being, and he can be hit. He can be hurt. He yeah. can be rocked. He can be essentially finished if... That, if that fight would have had two more rounds, I, I, it was super close. If if they would have said Gilbert Burns, I would have been completely fine with that. Mm. It was a super close fight. I think two more rounds would have showed a more. I think Gilbert would have kept putting Taking that pedal. Yeah, 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 I agree with him. I don't think no, anyone's talking about, about. That's actually a pretty good point. Like yeah. Gilbert could have gotten the decision there. No yeah. one really talking about that. Oh yeah, I when that fight was over, we were watching it, and I was like, I don't know who won. Yeah. I was like, either way, I'm. I'm happy with it because it was a great fucking fight and they deserved it. But I thought Gilbert could have got the decision just as easy as but Hamza here's the, did. Let me let me defend Hamza in the following sense, which was, you know, I think we both agree he kind of fought like a jackass. Yeah. If he fights a more disciplined, yeah, game, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like part of that, maybe he ruins his own ferocity, but it, it has to help his chances. Yeah, yeah. Um, he definitely didn't fight the smartest way he could, but maybe he just has that in him, like that he just wants to go in there and that's. He just fucking, that's what comes, no, we never seen that. So we never, we don't know if that's how he's going to fight every single time somebody does crack him, you know, because that's got, that's how Paul Felder is in the gym. Like you hit him with a good shot. He wants to hit you with like four more shots harder than what you just hit him with. <laughs> he you sounds know? like a nightmare. <laughs> oh, to yeah, he wants yeah. to hit you right in the he, iron uh, lung. Yeah. <laughs> he was fighting Edson the first time and the UFC was there filming for UFC countdown. And one of my teammates came up to me because I was his next round and he said, Keep your hands up, bro. He's throwing wheel kicks. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so I already knew what I was getting myself into. But uh, no, nah, Hamza's the truth. He's super legit. Our division is great. And I, I can't wait to test myself. Or what about this Kamaru Usman? Kamaru Usman, yes. Come on. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, he's raised his game. You have to give him that respect. Pound for pound but, best. But when pound you pound see best. him, though, are you focused in on holes that you think you can exploit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Personally, I don't think Kamara is going to be around much longer. I think he's going to have, like, one or two more fights, and I think he's going to ride off into the sunset. Um, he's done everything already. You know, I don't feel like he, he's, I could, like, he's talking about boxing Canelo, and I feel like once you start saying shit like that, like, you kind of, like, already yeah. thinking about other stuff. But as far as a fighter, Kamara's great. You know, he has 
Um, great wrestling. He has chair. Yeah, this monkey. guy's so uncomfortable. I mean, this it's is great. the worst chair in America. <laughs> you want to switch spots with me? Oh, it's okay. I There's a you. loose spring on that chair that does a little how's your father if you stand at the <laughs> yeah, wrong angle. Is, you know, it's going to shoot him into the yeah. air. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. No, nah, Kamara's, but same thing. He's the pound per pound best because of how good he is. And nobody thought he was going to knock out Mazdal all the way he did. And he, he fucking starched him. So, um, yeah, I just, I'm just excited. You know, I'm excited to be part of a fucking division that has all these good guys but i like i said i think i'm i match up well against everybody what about colby where do you think because there is the debate about colby is obviously he has done some good stuff in terms of being his, his fighting ability especially winning over masvidal yeah. but he a short sort of being masvidal he hasn't beaten hardly anyone in the top five in quite some time yeah it's funny you said that i never even realized that until someone said it. i'm like damn he doesn't have a single win besides masvidal over anybody in the top 10 yeah um but same thing with colby like he's good but i remember watching rda fight him and Colby's the he's really good at being the hammer, but once you kind of put like um RDA took him down a couple of times, I'm like, damn, like that's that's something nobody's ever tried to do to him. Even Usman. Usman never shot on him in those two fights. If what if Usman would have shot on him, took him down and could have finished him potentially, you know? So um yeah, I look at I look at it a different whole different way. Like RDA took him down very easy off the cage, and I'm like, that's something not many people are not many people are shooting on the Wrestlers are really good at being the wrestler when they're offensive. They're not very used to being the defensive guy when you start putting the pressure on them. So, um, yeah. What, all right, one more for me. What about Shavkat Rachmanov? Oh, you love Shavkat Rachmanov, Luke Thomas. For, oh, look, he's undefeated a, as well. Oh, yeah. He's, Sean Brady's undefeated, yep, so is Rachmanov. Yep. Uh, he's, not, he's, he's amazing. His, his striking's great. He has, throws wheel kicks. He does all kinds of crazy shit. He has submissions. He has, he's almost like a Hamza, but without... The, the height, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I I actually think he's skill for skill better than Hamza. So, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's... He's pretty special. Yeah, he is, he is. What sure. do you think could end up being the fight that takes you to the next level? And everyone, when they're rising and they're a contender and they're unbeaten or unbeaten in the UFC, you know, you end up with that fight. Sometimes it's a bigger name on the come down, but what do you th what do you think could end up being that breakthrough fight for you? Um, I think the fight that makes the most sense would be me and Luke at this point. I'm nine, he's six. He's uh You're nine? Yeah, I'm nine. Weren't didn't you beat number six at Kiesa? Yeah. So why the fuck are you nine? Why don't you why don't you ask the UFC, Luke? I don't care. From Luke was <laughs> telling me it's not it's it's uh other media members so we need to well you we see need to who, hash that out you see them. who shows up at these ufc press conferences and ask the media <laughs> questions okay you like, know? yo why'd you motherfuckers put me at nine <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah put them on the spot so great <laughs> um no i think me and luke would be a great fight though i think that's what makes the most sense because like i said most guys everyone just wants to fight ahead of them which i mean i'm trying to do too you know but um I wanted to fight Wonder Boy. He kind of pretty much just said, fuck that, which I I respect. I mean, know. I don't think he said fuck that, to be fair. Just, you know, Wonder Boy, he didn't, he didn't, no, he didn't no. swear. I mean, well, he, you, he did. He didn't I mean, swear. what the hell's wrong with you? He you know? didn't swear, but he essentially said fuck that. Okay. He said fuck that shit. So, uh, but now me and uh, me and Luca, that's that's what I'm hoping for. For for, for Thompson, that's God bless you, probably. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's just just like you know, thank you, sir. God bless Sean Brady, his whole family. Yes. No thanks. I know, but the point about like Wonder Boy, it's dude. I mean, one, I mean, he, what, Wonder Boy is almost a 40 year old man. But, and then he should be fighting I, basically. I, I agree. Whoever he wants. I agree. But at that point, if you're going to be like that, I don't think you should be in the rankings. I don't think you should be holding because what's the realistic? What's the point of being in the rankings? It's to eventually get into the top five and get a title shot. If you're holding up spots like that, go off, do the Nate Diaz's, do the Nick Diaz fights, do all that shit. But let us younger guys who are trying to make our names, make our money, make our way up, let us do what we're trying to do. How have you, it's surprising. How have you never crossed paths with Bilal Muhammad? We were scheduled to fight in December of 2020. And I was coming off of a fight in August and I had a, uh, a fracture in my... Smaller, it's, I think it's your tibia, your fib. What I had a little, I had to pull out of the fight regardless. But um, yeah. So that's what I, I thought we were going to collide again after that, but it just hasn't happened yet. Has his success surprised you at all? I have to say, like he, yes, he but, has definitely exceeded my expectations. Yes. I, I've been wrong, and I, yeah. I will acknowledge it up front. Yeah. And um, he's put himself in a good spot. He doesn't yeah. skip chest day at all. He's fucking yoked, bro. He's I, fucking yoked. I remember he was getting ready to fight um Lyman Good, and I was like, this is going to be a fucking beat down yeah. and he and he beat Lyman and I was like holy shit and then he kept kept winning and kept like the Damian Maya fight and then um obviously the Leon fight ended didn't end the way anyone wanted it to end but then the way he beat Wonder Boy and then what he just did to Luke was 
definitely the most impressive. So I'm super impressed by him. To beat Luke the way he did was very impressive. You're on the rise, but you also know how this game works. And I'm sure if somebody called you out, you would have no problem getting into a trash talk war. But do you feel the push to be like, man, I, I could make my name if I start talking about Usman's kids. If I start, you know, if I start, if I yeah. start, I'm not saying do yeah. the full on. No, I, I know you're Jesus, Brian yeah. Campbell. I'm not yeah. saying Yo, the You got to go on. commit arson <laughs> right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm not saying, a yeah. Car. You know, <laughs> but do you feel that, that itch once in a while to like, because that's that's the currency in this game that can also yeah. get you far. I know you yeah, can I, hate on it all you want, but one it thing works. No, it works. But it works. I did it with um I didn't I nicely called out Wonder Boy and I got fucking burned for it by all these people. I'm like, dude, like I'm number nine, he's seven. I'm just trying to get a fucking fight. And all these fans are like, you're calling out, like what you just said, you're calling out an old dude who just got beat up by Bilal. I'm like, I'm just trying to get the next fucking guy ahead of me. Like, that's all I'm trying to do. And so that's why I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm just going to. You get to a point like Luke gets to where he's like, fuck my fans, yeah. my viewers, all the people that put money in my pocket. I don't care about your opinions <laughs> at all. Fuck off. That's, no. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, you, you, you should care what the fans yeah. say, or at least you should be somewhat aware yeah. of it. You just can't. It's not gospel. Yeah. It's not yeah. gospel. You, you just, I also don't want to, like, I come from a group, like, I don't want to be the guy. I don't want to sell out of who I am, like, who my parents know who I am. My, yeah. my wife, my brothers, my family know who I am. Like, I'm not going to become someone I'm not, you know, just to make it to the top. I'm going to make it to the top by winning fights. Whether it takes me a little bit longer, it is what it is. Okay, when is that moment, as we talked about your sort of background, that you were like, oh, shit, I could do this sport, but that... I could potentially be a future champion because you need that moment early enough to give you that next level drive. Like, when did that sort of hit? When I was 20, 21 years old and I was training with all pros, I was still an amateur and I was doing very well. And they're like, listen, stay dedicated, keep doing what you're doing and you can fucking be a champion. And I've been with the same, Daniel Gracie's been my coach for the last 10 years. Um, I've been with the same coaches for, I've never left Philadelphia and that's something I pride myself on. I could go to any one of these super gyms and just say, Fuck my city, fuck my fuck my little team that I have, but uh, they got me where I am. I'm loyal to them, you know, and I feel like we have a good thing going in Philly, and I feel like it's just going to get bigger and bigger, and um, I'm going to be the first UFC champion from Philly fighting out of Philadelphia. When, when did you know that you were a good athlete before fighting? Ah, uh, when I first. Well, it really, when I first started lifting, I was like, all right, like, I'm pretty strong. And then uh, I, I fell in love with, like, if I didn't fight, I'd be 100% a power lifter. Like, I blew out my back <laughs> doing straight bar deadlifts, like almost pulling 600 pounds when I was like 22 years old. Um, oh, I see you're a maniac. Okay. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, Well, you know, my, yeah. my therapist tells me, Luke, I'm addicted to the chaos of life. <laughs> okay? Yeah. She said that? Yeah. This guy's addicted to, um, I'm trying to figure it out. It's not just pure like He's not a sadist. Suffering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes, uh, well, the challenge or competitor. Yeah. I've yeah. switched over to day. trap bar deadlifts, by the way. So Good. I'm still That's pulling smart, in the yeah. fives, but uh, only on the trap bar. Yeah. Okay, a real man, true or false, if needed, can wear a damn pair of gloves to lift weights. It's not a big deal. Listen. Calluses be damned, right? No, 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 no. I'm Listen, so glad you, you do that not wear gloves. gloves. <laughs> you do not wear gloves when you lift weights. I'm not saying I, I don't have care. since I was 17, Fuck but I in. did at some point. I don't care what you do with your hands. You do not wear those mitts when you're lifting weights. See, Brian, it's you would like to discount me. I'm not Sean Brady. I'll never be yeah. that kind of thing. But I've been around a lot of them my whole fucking life, bro. I've tell, seen what they do. Tell that to Conor McGregor. Real, real mother, tell that to Bruce yeah. Buffer. Okay? Real motherfuckers lift with their bare their hands. hands. That's, That's right. It. That's period. End of story. Okay. Uh, Jorge Posada of the Yankees said he used to piss on his hands in the offseason <laughs> to get it you know, hardened so he can grip that bat more. Let's see how man you are. I'm not pissing on my hands. Yeah, I'm not urinating on my hand. I'll urinate on your hand <laughs> or your face. You're like I'm R. Kelly in this in this uh, in this equation. All right, no more. That's, but, it. You, no, so uh, getting back to the Philly thing for just a second, the Philly boxing side of things. The interesting part about it is when I was your age, so 29, that must have been what was that? 2009. I was 29. Mm -hmm. The MMA and the boxing worlds were not very mixed at yeah, all. Yeah, and yeah. now we're getting a little bit where it's a case where we are. So one of the guy who the guys who fights on Showtime is uh, Jerron Ennis, who is. I've been saying this for a while. You watch him compete. He has just extraordinary talent. Yeah. You've known him for some time. Yeah. How did you end up meeting Jerron Ennis? So I was at that gym, Semper Fi MMA, and um, the the owner, Julio Rosario, knew Bozy, which is his father, and he came in. He started teaching boxing classes, and Boots was coming in, and it had to be 
How old was he at this Bo point? Bo I was like, I was a teenager. So Boots was maybe 12. Wow. Because I'm 29. He's 24, 25. So he's four years younger than me. So he was maybe 12 years old. And um, his, he was like already getting into the stage of like, he was fighting amateur and like he had a great amateur record. And then over the years, he used to hold pads for me all the time. And then he started fighting professionally and was just rallying. So he didn't have the time to do it. But um. He, everyone always said that like, he's he's a special talent because his brothers were both good. His dad was a boxer, but all that knowledge is just went down to him and he has the hard work, the dedication, like all he does is box. He looks like a virtuoso. It looks like he's creating ideas on the fly. Yeah, yes. like, yeah, you know. yeah. He, he fucking loves it and he's, I think he's going to be like the next big thing for sure. He's got a style. He's almost like a, maybe this isn't right, Brian. If it's not, tell me I'm wrong. He's almost a somewhat flashier <laughs> Bud Crawford a little? Yeah, I mean, Something I mean, like that. Uh, you know, yeah. th this he's the type yeah. of fighter, and I've heard it said where when they go, hey, Roy Jones, does anybody out there look like Roy Jones these days? And, you know, he would mention a boot tennis yeah. or a Teofimo yeah, Lopez because yeah, yeah, yeah. these guys just feel like they can jump through the screen with yeah. with the yeah. with, with the ability to do what seems like a simple punch, but they make it extraordinary. Yeah. They leap in, the timing, the angles, man. Yeah, he's legit, and, you know, Danny Swift Garcia still showing, still holding the... Mm -hmm. uh, that that strong ex champion yeah, Philly vibe. Yeah, when you look at Boots and it's just effortless. Like he goes from orthodox to southpaw, and he's as good both stances. And uh, he's big for 147. And these dudes don't want to smoke, but somebody's gonna have to get it from him. What's his reputation in Philly? That he's just the best thing that's ever came out of Philly. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even better than Rocky. <laughs> Even better than Cool Boy Steph. <laughs> All right, come on. Cool Boy Steph trains at the gym too with him. So they're, they got, Jr., they got a man. good thing yeah. going on. Have you there. ever heard Bill Burr's rant on Philly? Yeah. It's you, fucking hila it's hilarious. Dude, the whole bit about Joe Lewis, the statue it's, with Joe Lewis, it's, it's, that's maybe the best dagger. Wasn't he in Philly or didn't Yes. It? He was, well, it was a comedy festival. Yeah, so it wasn't yeah. just him. And they were like booing him or some it shit. Was the, he was like, no, it was, fuck back, you back guys. At, this is my best recollection, but it was the Opie and Anthony tour where they would tour and Patrice O'Neill was part of it. Jim Norton was part of mm -hmm. it. And I guess something had gone wrong during the set in Philly, and they were booing him because, you know, that's yeah, what y'all yeah, do. Yeah, that's what we do. And uh, he was like, you know what? Let me turn the tables on you bitches. <laughs> do, people on, do, people in Philly, do people in Philly talk about the Bill Burr roast? It's it's quite famous. I, I think it's hilarious. People talk about it, but, it, like, we think it's fucking hilarious. Okay. I thought it – I watched it, and I literally pissed my pants watching it. It's fucking so funny. Are you aware of this, BC? Uh, yes, I am. It's, 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 well it's a good watch. It's a good watch. You know, of course, Philly known for other famous comedians too, like Bill Cosby, so why don't you back off? Anyway. <laughs> oh, um, Jesus. Good Jesus. Lord. Uh, how, up to this point, do you feel you've navigated that other side, the business side, the negotiations, the, you know, public branding, the any kind of leverage you can get? How, you know, this is a fertile time with all the fighter pay talk, of course, but do you feel like you have gotten learned quickly to where you need to be to navigate that side of it too? No, because I feel like that also, I mean, I could definitely be doing better than I am because that also falls into the, uh, you, you, there, there's only so many hours in a day. You can only focus on so many things that matter. And to me, what matters is my actual skills, my nutrition, my sleep, the shit that actually is going to win me fights and, uh, keep me healthy long enough so I can fight until I'm as long as I want to do it. Uh, when you get on social media and you're sitting there for hours trying to create content and do all these things, like that's taking away from being an actual fighter, and I'm an actual fighter, and um, that's what I'm focused on. Okay, okay. What well, you're Irish? Yes, my I have grandparents from from Ireland. Yeah. Yes, yes. Don't but I am I'm I'm, I'm American. I'm, okay. I'm I'm American. Phil, okay. You know. Is there? Do you have a dream to headline in Philly? Yeah, that's that's what. A lot I'll, of MMA but, fighters don't get the headline at home. Well, Wells Fargo is um what I what I would love to do, but. I don't know when the fuck they're coming back to Philly. When is the last... Serious question. When is the last big fight in Philly? The last UFC was 2019. It was um, Edson Barbosa versus Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje, Gaethje that's right. And on yeah. the boxing side? Uh, it's been a while. Why? Big Holy fights shit. don't go to yeah. Pennsylvania. Why is that? Is there a commission They have a strict issue? commission. Commission. They have a strict commission. That's yeah. part of it, but, you know... I don't. I don't think the tax laws are, are laxed enough to try to draw people in either. You know. Yeah, the commission. Um, I've heard they've given like the UFC problems and shit like that. So they're uh, they're not notoriously big. tough boxing. Not not big on coming back. Yeah, I guess so. Still, it would be cool, right? To yeah. To well, like me, like Paul always said he would come out of retirement to fight at Wells Fargo. Oh, really? Again. Yeah. So like me, Paul Felder, Pat Sabatini, the Dawkins brothers, like. 
we would fucking run house on that shit. Like, I just don't know. You got Jersey fighters. You got Frankie Edgar. Like, we have so many guys. Um, yeah. I think. How do you think Felder's transition to the mic? Obviously, we all know he's good. I think but he's, do you think he's climbing, like, becoming literally one of the best? Right I, think he's one, yeah, he I think he's one of the best. Because, um, like I said, like I always say about Luke, uh, when I listen to him, he knows what he's talking about. And uh, he can break stuff down. And people like me who actually train and fight, like, like, I can relate to him. And Paul's the same way. But he also relates to the casual fans. And he breaks it down in such a way where the casual fan can understand it, too. Um, I so, think he's doing great. I'll tell you what Paul does for me is a lot of times I see the commentators talking a lot about narrative. And I'm not saying that's that's not correct, like what's happening in the larger perspective yeah. of things. He's the guy who makes sure they don't miss the real important detail about yeah. what is actually driving the action. Yeah, like digging like an underhook and like there's like certain like he breaks down the details. Yes, very in well. a way that he doesn't go overly yeah, over the top yeah, of them, yeah, but yeah, yeah. he definitely makes sure that like we are we're not just talking. Sometimes they'll just start talking about, hey man, y'all remember when we had that yeah. that that great dinner at the yeah, Silver Diner? Yeah. It's like <laughs> DC, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, Felder's the one who's like, oh right, see so you know how that wheel kick landed yeah, because yeah, he moved yeah, into yeah, it. I'm yeah. like, ah uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. he he brings it back and um that, and he's doing all the try triathlon shit right now too so he's a he's a madman when you all. found out he was an actor like a like a stage actor were you like dumbfounded yeah we uh <laughs> we found some pictures of him with like some makeup on his face and we were fucking dying like this was like <laughs> 10 years ago i was like 20 we're like what the fuck is this i think some of them came out on twitter like people were trying to roast him about it but he didn't give a shit but uh i think that's exactly what helped him transition into his role is i guess that that acting because doing shit behind the camera, like it's hard, you know. Um, that shit's hard. It's and not for Paul, everybody. And uh, it's definitely not. And Paul, Paul we've did, been in the trenches, Paul, Paul Brady. Paul, Paul does a good job, just like Absolutely. you boys. What? All right, go ahead. No, no, you first. I got, I, I got you. half a stake in this show. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> producer. Craig. Um, the cage walk, that's got to be a uh, like otherworldly surreal experience. You know, your song playing, they're yeah. screaming your name. What is your song? Is that is that to Meek Mill song? Meek Mill song. Okay, all right, that's is fine. Is that like a shit your pants moment, or is that like a I'm ready to run through the wall moment? Because I don't, and I don't say that because you're scared, but like yeah. you're you're human. Everybody's yeah, gonna have yeah, to like yeah. you know push away. It's that a little, it's a little bit of both, honestly. But when once I like for me the scariest part is that walk. But as soon as I get in the cage, I'm like, all right, like this is just this is what I do. You know, it's just it, it feels it feels natural. Like I do this all the time, and I just gotta believe in myself and uh, get this. Get the job done. Yeah, sometimes we talk to the athletes and they have that shit their pants moment. But dude, there's a few of them, man. Yeah, they love it. That's yeah. like the, yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. They, yeah. They not more than tolerating it. They yeah. love it. Yeah, my, yeah. My, our producer Manich would really like to know if you're talking about Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. No, it is. Um, it's uh, DJ Khaled and Meek Mill. They don't love. They don't love you no more. So I did it my pro debut and. Uh, I never change it because I'm like super superstitious. Is that how you yeah. say it? Yeah. As I, the only thing I I'll never change my song. Everything else I don't give a shit about. Fifteen pro fights, fifteen times that song is played every single time. Never change. You no, know, I like me. though. he's done some stuff with Wale out of DC. Yes, yes, he's yes. Done some good yes. stuff together. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he, he has done some Wale. <laughs> Thank you, adult white male. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He has some Wale for sure. Do you play the basketball by any chance? Hey, listen. <laughs> Listen, uh, you do listen to MK a little bit. That's kind of crazy. Most yes. of the time, we, we bring fighters in here, and they're like, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> Glover right. Teixeira at some point was like... Um... He, he rem <laughs> no, no, we had, we had Glover Teixeira in here. He remembered my face. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, remembered yeah. my face. Yeah. But at some point, I even was like, man, I live, you know, not too far from you. I grew up from where you live. He's just like, okay, cool. Yeah, all right. All okay. right, all right. What's the next topic here? <laughs> but we know you're a big MK guy, so I don't think you're going to show up at the next UFC press conference wearing a drug rug. But we did. <laughs> Let me call room uh, service our, to get that here. Our staff here did service. outfit you uh, with a, with a okay. bag, a uh, drug rug, right. and some other MK merch that yeah. you can. Uh, you I've know. heard about the drug rug through you guys, so. Um, it, it, feel, free, pretty, feel free to. It's uh, pretty, pretty legendary. Dairy. Deposit it in the should I Should I open this up you now? Should, you, you know what? I think you guys I... should be drug rug brothers. How about that? I think you should just see. Because here's the thing. I need to ask you this about where you come from, Sean. Because where I come from, the heroes were this. Okay. Okay? The the the, the people, the guys that people looked up to. The guys hoodie. that people wanted hoodie. to be. Another hoodie. Now, there it I'm is. I'm really looking for... Oh, there we yeah. go. Look. Oh, he's got a little green oh, on his. This, so, yeah, so do I. We're going to be like the No, you got more like shit brown. Yeah, I do have a little shit stain color, <laughs> but you know, it's just, oh, look Here at this. Here we go. Look at this, you know? 
Now you can sit in row eight on Delta you know anywhere that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, All right. I know you're married, but if you weren't, you I mean, what a sex I machine mean, this uh, guy would be. Look at this guy. It was our anniversary yesterday. <laughs> I mean, I, by the way, same, lucky same, when we same wedding anniversary as I have. Um, I'm wondering if your wife uh, thinks this increases the the testosterone look, you know, the man look. Yeah, that seems to know? be his problem, BC, real testosterone deficient. Well, my, I was going to say. My, uh, my test just dropped probably 400 points. Yeah. <laughs> I disagree, but one more thing, Sean. You know, they don't have a great food spread here for celebrities, <laughs> as you already saw, but they, they purposely style. fill me up with Brazilian nuts. Mm -hmm. You want to know why? Because we got a low T staff here. Like, there's no question. Like, look at them. <laughs> but but they find out that this raises your T. In fact, it's, it's true. I think one guy got a girl pregnant immediately after. <laughs> immediately after, after okay, eating the nuts? So, so All right, before, before we before we wrap up here, you're going to break my heart and tell me you don't know who Jedi Mind Tricks are? I do. Okay. Not not huge into them, but I know who they are. Oh, yeah, you yeah, fucking... Yeah. What are you doing to me, Sean? Yeah. It's like the one... the Well, there's two redeeming things about Philly. You and, and Jedi, fucking Jedi Mind all Tricks. Right, all right. Uh, I'm going to have to... I'm going to bro, all right? I'm going to get on my <laughs> Jedi Mind Tricks, for sure. Uh, Sean, what is the goal for 2022, man? Like, well, I know you don't have a fight, but when do you... I mean, I guess you don't really know, but... Yeah. You're ready to fight, basically? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. We we're looking like July time frame, so it still looks good. That's what we're hoping for. Um, I want to be in the top five by the end of the year and knocking on that door for uh, number one contender by the end of the year. That's, right. that's, that's my goal. So when Glover was here, we told him that if he won his fight, he had to come back here and drink with us, which he said he would do. Okay. Now, you don't have much real estate left, but if you win your next fight, if it's Luke or whoever it ends up being, I might make my way to Philly. I might get some ink with you, and we'll talk about it. How's that sound? Listen, if you want to set up a tattoo for me and you, I'll get, I'll set up the tattoo. Yeah. You come up. Showtime will pay. We will. Showtime will pay. <laughs> My boy Matt Lamb will tattoo that inks us. Me. Yeah. We'll drink and we'll get tattooed. Yeah. And we'll film it. And BC, would you? Would you get tattooed? What will they allow me to put in my body before the tattoo process? You can. Starts? You can do it. You're whatever not supposed you want. to drink, but you can definitely get high. I know the tattoo artist. You can drink. Yeah, okay. Private, you know, if it's, we're a, hanging it's a out, private studio. If we, we can I drink. mean, look, you know, is Sean Brady only hanging out with us because we have cameras? That's a question. But if we get to that point, <laughs> if we get to that, and obviously because of the drug rugs, um, I'll do it. I'll man up. All right. I'll be the, you know, I once said 250,000 subscribers and I'll get that ink. How about how about hanging out with hey, he beats Vicente Luque? I'm getting it. How about uh, hanging out with this unbeaten well deal? Okay. All right. Deal. That'll we don't need them Brazilian nuts. That's already <laughs> raised my tea. Okay. All right. Sean, thank you for making yeah, the effort here for from sure. Philly. Yep. Can't wait to see what happens next. Yes, sir. Brian Campbell, Luke Thomas. It looks good BC, on you. LT, SB, MK. This has been Room Service Drug Rugs. Let's go. Drug Rugs for life. <laughs>